Welcome to this afternoon's webinar, Querying the Shared Dataset. My name is Judy Rutenberg. I am a Program Director with the Association of Research Libraries working on the SHARE initiative. SHARE is a higher education and library initiative to maximize research impact by building a free, open data set of research activities across the life cycle. As a fully open source project, we are particularly keen to provide this webinar for the library develop developer community in the hopes that you will contribute to and derive value from SHARE by creating tools and services on top of the open metadata we are aggregating. My job today is to go over a few brief logistics and then to introduce our speaker, Aaron Braswell. This webinar will be live captioned and recorded and then posted to YouTube in approximately one week. Due to the number of participants today, questions will be through chat only as your lines are muted. I will read any questions we receive aloud for Aaron or myself to answer. With that, it is my pleasure to introduce Aaron Braswell, a developer at the Center for Open Science who has been working on SHARE since it began in 2014. Aaron is an astronomer by training, a very talented instructor as you'll soon experience, and a professional wrestling enthusiast. Thank you all for joining us this afternoon. And now over to you, Aaron. Thanks for the intro, Judy. Um, so we're going to get started. Uh, so this is going to be quite an interactive webinar. Um, so we are going to uh, run through a bunch of slides that are going to be querying the SHARE API, as is uh, uh, specified by the title. And so to get started, I am going to um, share my desktop and uh, share with you something called Jupyter Notebook, which is an interactive um, Python notebook. So we'll be making web queries um, as we go. All right. So. Um, here is our Jupyter Notebook, which will let us run some Python code. So here we go. We're going to go into presenting mode. So you can see um, these slides and some example notebooks at this URL. Um, some other examples that go a little bit more in depth into querying the Share API. And um, you can download the code along with um, some more in-depth examples on how to, um, how to run these things with this URL. Okay. So, um, so here's um, some examples of how to get set up. Uh, so you're going to need to use Python. So here's um, a basic guide to getting started with Python. And um, again, the link to the, to the slides on GitHub. And just here's just a little bit of information on um, just how to get up and running uh, with Python. You would use um, some tools that are highlighted on the README to get to get started. And you would run, um, be able to run this exact same notebook that I'm running um, in a terminal by uh, running the command Jupyter Notebook, and then you can follow along if you're familiar with this kind of thing. So to get started first, um, we are interested in just doing something very simple. We want to get a list of the current share providers. So we can make an API call. Um, we're going to basically uh, query, uh, go to a URL and ask, the, ask uh, for that information that's at that URL. And from that URL, we'll get the official name of every share provider, um, the URL for the home page of that share provider, the short name or a nickname that we use in the system to make sure that we um, that we are uh, querying the right one, so it's just a nickname. And we'll use this nickname when we query for documents inside the source. And we're also going to get um, the favicon or the um, provider's uh, image that's associated with that provider. So here is um, some code to get started with Python module called request. And we're going to use request to get this URL. And so we'll run, we'll run this cell code. And then we have that ready. And now let's see what our data looks like. So we're going to um, just print out what that data looks like. It's going to be quite big and bulky, and there's a lot of information there that we don't quite know how to interpret. Um, but we see um, some, 
some shreds of what we're looking for, something called a long name, which was the provider's official name, the short name or the nickname, uh, the URL, which is the provider's official homepage, and then um, something called a favicon, which is actually the image of uh, for each provider stored in a data URL format. But that's not very nice. It's not very easy to read. So we're going to format that um, in a way that looks a little bit better. So we can use um, just some very simple tools uh, that this IPython notebook or Jupyter notebook provides. And um, some simple Python code to then print out uh, the image, the um, long name or the official name, the uh, URL for the official home homepage, and as well as that nickname that we're going to be using throughout. So if we run that, that looks so much better. It's a lot easier to, um, to see. So for each of the share providers, we have their icon, their official name, a link back to the original, and then the nickname, the short name that we use in the system to differentiate between the providers. So here's all 99 providers that we have today. Let's just scroll through that real quick. You can see some of those. Icons are different sizes, but they're all in there. So, in order to make uh, queries to the share API, we need to know some more about the share schema. Um, so the share schema has a few required fields. Uh, those are fields that we look for in every single document that we harvest. Those fields are a title, uh, contributors, a URI, which is just uh, simply a link back to the original, um, the original item. Be it, um, be, it in, uh, be it the original item or like data sets related to that item or um, many different formats. And also a provider updated date time, which is the last time that um, the source that we got the document from updated the document. And um, so after we harvest the documents, we add some additional information just so we can make sure that we have unique documents in our system. So we have a source which is where the document was originally harvested, which will be one of those um, short names that we looked at before, as well as a document identifier. So uh, we try to find a unique identifier for that object from that particular source. Sometimes that's a DOI, sometimes it's an internal um, identifier, but we always try to find a unique identifier for each document. And when you combine those two fields, um, you make basically a unique document identifier for the source and then that identifier for that source. And um, to see more information about the Git share schema, including an example of a document that would have all of those fields, um, you can follow this link. And um, then you can, see, you can see the many, many, many fields in the share schema that we try to look for. So with that information in mind, um, we can start building up some simple queries to see the kind of data that's in the shared data set. So we'll start with the basic URL, and then we'll add some arguments to that URL the size, which is how many results we're going to get back, um, how we want those results to be sorted, and um, the from parameter, which is where we want to start in those results. So first we will um, define a basic base URL so we can start with. And from there, we're going to use a Python tool called furl, which will just let us very simply build up this URL with arguments. And so we're going to add that size parameter that sort parameter, which is the last time that it was updated, and then we're going to start at number five, just so we can start a little bit into those results. So let's take a look at our URL so far. We've added some parameters. So the URL is this. So we're going to be making a query to the uh, share API using size of three, sort of provider updated date time, and we're going to start at result number five. So let's take a look at our results. So we're going to request that URL, and we're going to get back data in a format called JSON, which is a key, a series of key value pairs so, so, so we can parse through that data. So let's run this cell and check out our three results. We're going to print out the title of each of those results. We're going to print out what source it came from, and we're going to print out the date that it was last updated. We have three results, one about protein-targeted corona phase molecular recognition. Um, from MIT, actually it looks like the most three uh, recent documents from MIT. That was probably the most recent they updated. 
So if we're interested in narrowing down the results only by source, we can uh, narrow it down to only results from MIT. So we're going to add a um, query parameter using that um, source parameter that we add after we harvest every document. So we're only going to be looking for documents whose source is MIT. So we're going to use um, some of the exact same code that we used before and print out the title, the source it came from, just to make sure they're all MIT, and then um, also the date that it was last updated. And so we get some results back that are all from MIT, which is good because that's what we were looking for. So those are some very basic queries using um, just paginating through them and also looking for results from just one source. But we can also use the Share API to build up much more complicated um, queries, and we will do that now. So first of all, we've been repeating a lot of our code, so we're going to define a helper function in order to make this go a little bit smoother, so we have to uh, type less things. So our helper function is going to be called query share, and it will just take a URL that we would like to use and then a query that we're going to pass along. It's going to make that request and then return us um, the value in, in the form of JSON. So there you go. So we're going to start building up a query. So this is uh, what Elasticsearch format looks like. We're going to ask for five results, and we're going to ask um, the API to return us results that have a field called sponsorships. So um, we're adding a filter that the field sponsorships exists. Because not sponsorships is not one of our required fields. And so we want to make sure that we're just going to get results back that have the field sponsorships. We define that variable sponsorship query. And so now we can run that query and then print the results. So the results, um, we're going to use that helper function query share. We're going to give it that URL that we've built up, as well as that sponsorship query that we made before. And then we're going to iterate through those results and then print them one at a time. Oops. <laughs> That's funny. Ah, right, so I forgot to run this cell. <laughs> there we go. So we're going to actually run, save that sponsorship query, and then run this cell one more time um, using that sponsorship query and that source results URL. So again, it's going to print out the title as well as the source that it's coming from, clinical trials, and then what the sponsor information is. So this one is sponsored there. Um, this one is sponsored by a different place. This one is sponsored by a university in Copenhagen, um, University of Vermont, and um, Pacific Cancer, Cancer Center. So this is iterating through results that have specific sponsorships. And you can see information about the title, where it came from, and then who those sponsors were. And this is, again, only the first, only five results, to keep it simple. So you can iterate through all of the results that have sponsorships. So let's, uh, let's do a new query. We want to know how many results do not have subjects associated with them. So we're going to uh, create a new query object, just like we did before. And then we're going to um, query share using that URL and get the total results back, as well as the um, total results that we get from that query so that we can uh, do some interesting things with percentage of results. We would like to know what percentage of results do not have subjects. So we can go ahead and print that result. So it looks like um, 3 million results out of a, a little over 5 million, or just about 68% of our results do not have subjects attached to them. So that's an interesting metric to know, especially as we move into uh, our next phases of trying to enhance the shared data set and making sure that more of our results have subjects attached to them. So um, in addition to making raw queries just using Elasticsearch, building them up yourself, we have developed a um, share parsing and analysis Python library um, that is available. All of the code is open source. Here's a link 
to that, um, to all of that source code. And that tool is called Sherpa, which will guide you through accessing shared data. Um, and so uh, Sherpa has a couple of basic actions that are really simple to use and will give you um, access to information about documents in 10, uh, 10 document slices. And one of the ma most basic functions is account. So you can use Sherpa just to get a raw count of all of the documents that are in Share. So from Sherpa, import basic search and then basic search dot count. And we'll run that. And we can just really quickly see that there are 5,297,000 documents in Share. So we can iterate through those results. Um, we had that basic search. We got, this, we got the count. We can then um, do a basic search and then iterate through those results that come back from that. So we'll go ahead and execute that basic search again. And then for every hit in the results, we will go ahead and print the title. So here are the first 10 titles, the most earliest titles in Share at the moment. So we can also use Sherpa to slice results. Um, we can access a different subset of results. We're going to print out five of them. We're going to start actually from the, it's, it's going to say 20 and 25, but because Python indexes everything from zero, it's actually moving to the 20, 21st and the 26th results. Um, so it's going to show up. So we'll go ahead and execute that search again, but instead of giving us the first 10, we want to specify a range. And that's going to start a little bit further in and then only give us five titles. So um, by, by default, um, the oldest results are returned first, but instead we probably are most interested in the most recent results. So instead of getting the oldest results, we can sort by um, what we call provider updated date time, which is essentially the last time that the provider updated that document. And we store that information and we can sort our query by that uh, parameter instead. So we'll go ahead and run this query sorted by provider updated date time and then pr print um, the title as well as the last time it was updated just to make sure that it looks okay. We'll go ahead and run that. And so these are the titles, and it looks like everything was indeed last updated today, so that's a good sign. Um, and we can see that we have a wide variety of results in SHARE. Um, so these are the 10 most recent documents. So we can also um, do some more advanced search using SHARPA and using some of those queries that we built up a little bit before. So um, we'll start up off by querying for objects that have a subject area. So that's what that query looks like. So we can then go ahead and execute that search. Again, um, sorting by most recent documents first. So this query will give us um, the number, uh, will give us the top first 10 documents that have subjects, and then also print out those subjects for us. We'll go ahead and run that. So it says the title of the document, as well as the subjects that are attached to that document as well. Just a couple of them. So um, when, when you're Making queries to a new and unfamiliar API, sometimes you run into uh, problems. Uh, so we're going to uh, step through um, making a query to the share API, trying some things out, and then making adjustments as we go. So um, we're going to start forming a search that we're not exactly sure how to make, but we're going to figure it out. So we're interested in seeing how many results are specified as being in a language other than English. We want to know um, how many tagged non-English language results are in share. So we'll start off by uh, mimicking the structure of some queries we've seen before. Um, we're interested in a query string type of query, and we want to look for not languages equals English. That sounds pretty intuitive. So we're going to go ahead and find that query, and then we're going to go ahead and execute that query, and then print the, for each result, 
print the language and make sure that we get it right. So when that happens, um, we get we get an error and we get an attribute error. Result object has no attribute languages. So that's a bad sign. That means that the information that we want is not in the, the query result. So result object has no attribute languages. So we have to look into that a little bit more. And if we, um, so first of all, maybe we want to start out by narrowing the query to results that only do have a language attribute. So since language isn't required, lots of results are not going to have that information included. And so if you try to access the language directly and it's not there, um, it's not going to know how to access it. So we'll go ahead and uh, start a new search and add a filter that makes sure that the languages field exists in each one of our queries that we get returned. And from there, we're going to go ahead and um, execute the search again get the um, total number of documents and share, and the number, the number of results that have language information included, and then print that out in a nice way to see more information. So um, there are 213,000, almost 214,000 documents and share, um, or only 4% of documents and share have a language attribute specified. So we're able to harvest language information from only about 4% of documents and share. So we're going to go ahead and print out the languages. We'll try that again. Print out the languages for each of those results and see what happens. So here are the languages that are included in each one of those first 10 results, and they're all English. So at least we're getting somewhere. We have a query that's not giving us an error. So from here, we can continue to refine our query and um, drill down into that getting the number of results that have non-English results. So another thing that we might have uh, noticed in our other uh, result is that they're all three-letter codes, ENG, before we were trying to query for English, the full word. And so if we go check out the share schema, um, we'll notice that the languages section specifies that it is a three-letter code that's specified uh, conforming to ISO 639-3. So it's going to be um, a series of three letters. And so um, if we know, we know that ENG is going to be the pattern we want to not include. So now we have more information, right? We know we want a three-letter string, and particularly we want ENG is going to stand for English. So we can continue to refine our query from there. So we're going to use another um, Elasticsearch tool. So we're going to query for not the term um, languages English. And then we're going to go ahead and execute that query. And we will go ahead and print out some information, the number of documents that do not have English language, and then um, print out the first 10 results. So it looks like there are 17,000 documents in share that don't have English listed. And here are the languages for those first 10 results. Just a little bit of a sanity check to make sure that we don't have English listed there. Um, and it looks like we have some German, French, Italian, um, and Latin. And no English, which is a good sign that our query worked. It's, no, it's a lower number, and also we don't see English in our first 10 results. That's a good sign. So we can also um, do some more complex queries and do some very basic um, visualization of the results of those queries. So we're going to do that using both um, HTTP requests to the API directly and also using Sherpa, that analysis tool. And we're going to look at something called aggregations, um, which are very useful queries that return summary statistics over the entire data set at once. Um, because Elasticsearch has information about everything. So it can do what's called an aggregation query, which is very useful um, in many ways. And we'll see that. And we're also going to do some um, very simple data visualizations of our results using a Python tool called Pandas and also Matplotlib to draw those plots. So first, we'll start out with those aggregations. And we're going to very quickly get summary statistics over the entirety of the shared data set in one query. So we are interested in the number of documents per source that are missing a description field. And so to do that, we're going to start building up a query in much the same way as we've done before. 
um, we're going to um, query for something that does not have a description field. And in addition to that query, we're going to add something called AGS or aggregation. And um, so that field, uh, we're going to do an aggregation on the term uh, of underscore type, which is the field in Elasticsearch um, where the source is stored. Um, that's kind of how Elasticsearch indexes all of the documents. So we're going to uh, save that aggregation query so we can run it later. And then we're going to go ahead and run that. Uh, we're going to query share using our helper function that we defined before. And go ahead and for each source, we're going to print the source and then the number of documents without description. This will just take a second because there are quite a few of them. All right. So now we have just a very long list of um, a number of documents and each source from that don't have descriptions which is um, not particularly useful because we don't have information about how many documents are in that source in the first place. So that would be really interesting to know. So um, we can add that information to the aggregation query to make sure that it returns us something a little bit more manageable and interesting. If we really want to know um, statistics about number of documents without descriptions for each source. So in that ag field, we're going to add, um, add a percentage field, which will just um, turn one of the parameters into a percentage, which will make it a lot easier for us to print out results. And so we're going to go ahead and make that query, get the number of documents with no description. And then um, for each one of those sources, we're going to go ahead and print out um, the, the percentage and also the number of total documents, uh, number of documents that fit the query and the number of total documents from each source. So it's a little bit more information. And we're going to limit it, um, if we go back to the query, we're going to limit it we're going to limit it to um, documents that have a minimum document count of one. We're going to ignore all of those um, many fields that have a description, uh, that have 100% of their documents have descriptions. So it makes the list a little more manageable. So it looks like um, uh, lots of the documents that we've harvested from NIH we uh, do not have descriptions for. Um, whereas from 60% of the documents um, from Erudite have no descriptions. So we can also use um, Sherpa to do some aggregation uh, and use, those, use that tool to build up some of those more complex queries so you don't have to do them by hand. Makes things a little bit clearer. So we're going to find out how many documents per source do not have a subject. So we're going to start off with a blank um, shared search object. <coughs> And we're going to have that exact same query that we've had before, not subjects equals stars. We want to know documents that do not have subjects. And we're going to add a, um, a sources aggregation, or a significant terms aggregation. So we are, we are interested in finding, yeah, OK, there we go. So documents from each source. We're going to go ahead and run this cell, and we have that all ready to go. So we're going to take a look at that long query that Sheriff has generated um, that we don't have to quite do by hand. We're going to print that query out. And so it's getting a little bit long, and it, but it looks a lot like the query that we um, defined before by hand. But this time, we've broken it up into little pieces, and it's easier for us to write. So we can go ahead and execute that query and then check out the results. Um, so we're going to go ahead and execute that search and then print out some information about them just to make sure that they all look the same. Um, and yeah, it looks so. This is interesting information about the documents in the shared dataset. Um, some of our 
some, some of our sources don't provide subjects at all, but others of them do. Um, so UT Austin, most of their documents have subjects. Um, a, lot of, a lot of sources are right in the middle. So another thing that might, we might be interested in is um, doing an Elasticsearch query to find out what the most common subjects are across the entirety of the data set and all of the sources. Um, this might be really interesting um, if we're interested in knowing the kinds of data that's been shared. So we're going to go ahead and start a new search object. And um, we're going to call this um, subject term filter. And we are interested in the field subjects. And we want to exclude some of the most common numbers, right? uh, some of the most common words. And we're going to go for a size of 10. So we want the top 10 subjects that we're going to get returned. We'll go ahead and run that. And so we're going to execute the, um, the search and then go, go ahead and drill down into what exactly we want and then print out those results. So it looks like the top is article, which is interesting. And then we have physics, science, research, mathematics, engineering, astrophysics. Um, these are just some of the top tags that uh, subjects that different documents and share are so now that we have that information, we might want to plot it. So we're going to do some basic plotting with um, a tool called Pandas and Matplotlib. So first of all, we're going to create a data frame. Um, so we need to get that we need to get the data into appropriate format that Pandas can then um, pack on to Matplotlib and make a nice graph with. So um, we're going to get that into a format called a data frame, which is really a lot like a spreadsheet. So we're going to import that data frame tool and then just take our dictionary of results and then put that into a data frame and then print that out and see what it looks like. So that looks a lot better than that JSON blob we had before. Um, so we can see the document count and then the key. So we know exactly how many documents um, came back using each one of the top terms, top subjects that we queried for earlier. So now that we have a data frame, we can plot it. So we're going to use um, a tool called PyPlot um, from the Matplotlib Python module. And we're going to say, uh, we're going to ask for a bar graph, and then we're going to ask it to base its bar graph on the document count from that data frame that we just had and then we'll ask it to show, show the plot. So here we go. Here's, an, here's a bar graph of the top 10 tags and the numbers of documents that map that include those subjects. subjects. So um, let's make that query a little bit more, um, a little bit narrower. So we're going to um, make a new search um, for all documents that have been updated between the years 2012 and 2015 that have the subject science. So we're going to build up quite a big query here. So we're going to create a new search object. And the first thing we're going to do, um, we're going to add a range filter. And then um, that range filter, we're going to filter the field provider updated date time, which is the last time that the provider updated the document. And we're going to look for documents that are um, have a date greater than or after um, January 1st, 2012, but before um, December 31st, 2015. So we're going to add that filter to our new search. Go ahead and execute that. And because we don't have to do it all at once, we're going to um, build it up slowly. So then the next thing we're going to do is add um, the subject science and also add an aggregation, which is that significant terms aggregation. So we'll go ahead and do that. So we're starting to really build up um, a rather large query. We've added a lot of different parts to it. So we're going to take a look at that query that we've built by printing it out. And it's getting really big. And Sherpa and Elasticsearch is taking care of some of the, um, some of the formatting of the query. So you'll notice that there's a lot of nesteders, and that's one nice thing about Sherpa is that it will um, help you build these uh, Elasticsearch query uh, layers 
so you don't have to write this out yourself because it can get a little bit um, involved. So we have that filter, we have that date range filter in there. We also have that subject filter, and we have the aggregations or the significant terms query. So we're interested in um, the, the field underscore type, which again was that short name, which is what um, Elasticsearch in the indexes the results on. So let's uh, go ahead and make that query and then graph the results. So using a lot of the same code that we've seen before, we're going to execute the query and then uh, convert that, the results of that query into a data frame. And then uh, we're going to turn one of the results into percent, percent so that it looks a little bit better. And then we're going to limit it just to the first 30 results so it doesn't get too overwhelming so you can actually read the, um, read the results. So we'll go ahead and run this. And so we can see these are the top 30 um, sources that have documents using the term science so, uh, that were between those two date ranges. It looks like CogPrint, which is one of their sources that we have run the furthest back, has between 60 and 70 documents within that time range that have the, the subject science, whereas it looks like University of Delaware and a couple other small ones down here have, uh, have a couple results using the term science that had been updated between those two days. So um, say we're interested in just plotting the number of documents per source. Um, and we'll go ahead and limit it again to 30 sources to make the graph readable, but we can make it as many as we like. So um, we'll go ahead and create a blank search object like before. We're going to query for star, which just essentially means query for everything. And we're going to add um, that terms aggregation, again, aggregating on that underscore type, which is the source or the short name for each of the documents. So we'll build up that query. We have a terms query already built. And so we'll execute that query again. We'll convert it into a data frame. And then we will sort that data frame based on um, <clears throat> so descending, so we were interested in the most the biggest ones up on the left and the smallest ones on the right. And then we want to limit it that limit that to the first 30 results so it doesn't get too overwhelming. So we'll go ahead and run that and there is our graph down at the bottom. So it looks like most of our results are from data sites and then uh, then Crossref and SigShare and PubMed Central and Data One um, and then goes on from there. So uh, say we're interested in making a pie chart, and we want to limit that to um, the top 10 sources that have data and share. So we'll go ahead and um, plot that. Instead of a bar graph, we'll plot that as a pie graph. And there's our output. And we see the same results, just in a slightly different format. So. Um, Say that we're interested in um, importing and exporting shared data to use it um, in the wide world. So here are some just very basic examples of how to um, get shared data into different formats. So say we wanted, we have that very interesting data frame. Um, we want to export that data into something um, like CSV or an Excel format so that we can use that data elsewhere outside of our Python program. Um, so we can go ahead, we're going to do a query, and then we're going to export those results into different file formats to use elsewhere. Um, and so we want to know the number of documents from each source that do have a description. Before we were looking at the number of sources that don't, but now we're going to do a query for the number of documents from each source that do have a description. So um, like we've been doing, we're going to start with a basic um, share search object. And then we'll start building up that query. We're going to look for anything with a description. And then we're going to add another um, term aggregation. And we're going to aggregate on the type, on the field underscore type, which is that short name that we have, which is the source. And we're going to make sure that um, results are returned in percentage format. And um, size of zero make sure that we return all of the results regardless. And so we'll go ahead and execute that search. Let's take a second. 
so now, uh, now that we have our search executed, we're going to um, make a data frame out of it. And we're going to uh, do a little bit of cleanup to the data frame to make sure that it looks a little bit better. So that includes um, adding our own percentage column in that old score column because score, the score column is a little bit unclear. And so we are going to um, multiply that score column by 100 and then make our new column, which we know is going to be the percent of documents that match each of our, that match our query. In our case, the number of documents that have a description. And we're also going to um, set the source name as the index. So it will look as though each of the results is indexed by that source name, and then drop that old column, which is called key. So now we're going to go ahead and show our results. So uh, that key column did stick around <laughs> for some reason, but we do have um, all these are all of the sources, and we have the um, background count, which is the um, number of documents that match our query. No, no, we have the, that's the number of documents that are total from each one of the results. And then we have the document count, which is the number of documents that match our query. So these are the numbers of documents that do have a description. And then we have the percent, which is that new column that we added. And so we can see um, documents from SSRN, documents from um, Mason, uh, and NIST all have a very high number of documents that do have descriptions. Um, and since this data frame is so large, since we have so many um, sources and share, it cuts out some of the middle ones just to keep it manageable. Um, and then we go down to some of our other sources that have um, fewer results with descriptions included. So now we have that rather interesting data set, and we have that in Python in a data frame. But we want to get that out of Python. So um, we can use pandas, actually, to um, convert that data frame into lots of different data formats. So um, we're going to essentially um, use a tool. We're going to call that data frame that we have, and we're going to use a tool called 2CSV and a tool, tool called 2Excel. And we're just going to pass it a um, pass to a place that we want this to be saved. So in my case, it's a folder called exported data. And then give that a name, share accounts with descriptions. This one's not CSV. This one's not Excel. So I'll just show you. Um, this is the folder. Oh, I had it a second ago. Nope, OK. <laughs> Code, share stuff, share tutorials, exported data. So here, exported data. That's why I'm going to export my, um, my data frame to. So right now, that folder is empty. Um, but we're going to go ahead and run this cell, which will take those data frame, that data frame and then export it into, um, right into my files. So here I have an Excel spreadsheet and also a CSV um, that I can go ahead and take a look at. And it will have, it's a CSV, it will have the, um, the source that it came from. Uh, the number of documents that are total, and then the number of documents that match the query, and then the percentage, um, so that I can take the CSV and do whatever I like with it. So um, say that we have some outside data that we would like to use to query share. Um, so in our case, we're going to assume that you have the data in Python. There are lots of different ways to get a list um, a, a CSV file of names, or an um, Excel file of um, orchids, or anything you would like to work with in the Python. We're going to start um, having a list of names that we would like to use to query share. So we're just going to have two names of two researchers in our university. Um, and then we're going to um, use those names to query, sh to start building up a uh, share query. So we're going to say, Start off with a new share search object, and then for name in our list of names, go ahead and um, add a new query to our name search. And then we're going to go ahead and execute that result. So we're going to start building up. We'll build up um, a large query for each of those names, and then execute. 
and we'll go ahead and print out our results, the number of documents that are in our search, and then um, the title of each of our documents, and then the names of the contributors in through those documents just to make sure that our search went okay. So it looks like there are 38 documents in share with contributors that have those names. And um, here are some of our titles. So we had um, the first the first results had a contributor with that name, which looks great. Um, we'll go down to the last one. It looks like uh, this result also had um, a contributor using matching one of those names that we gave it. So um, we can add an aggregation if we're interested in knowing what sources those results came from. So we'll just take that name search that we built up before with all of those queries. Um, we'll just add an aggregation of the field underscore type, which is the source of the document. And we'll go ahead and re-execute that and um, save it into a data frame so we can see what it looks like. So it looks like 12 of those documents were from data site, 11 cross reps, 7 PubMed Central. Um, so it's just an interesting spread of all the different sources that had um, documents with contributors that were matching those names that we gave it. So um, people's names are rather variable. There's lots of people who have the exact same name. So something a little bit more concrete um, is something uh, like an ORCID. Um, that is uh, unique to each researcher. And SHARE does try to gather ORCIDs whenever we can find them in order to differentiate um, between people who might have the same name. So say we have um, a list of ORCIDs that we know are researchers that we are interested in finding more about and seeing if they have information in SHARE. So we'll go ahead and save that list of sources. And we'll start up a new SHARE search object. And then we'll do much of the same thing. We'll have a for loop. And we'll add a new query for each one of those ORCIDs in our list. And we'll go ahead and um, query share for that list. So build up the query first. And then we will, we're also interested in the number of sources that these came from. So we're going to go ahead and add an aggregation, again, on that field of underscore type, which is that short name of the source and we will execute that query. And so now we will go ahead and print out the results from those documents, and then put the results into a data frame. So it looks like there are 12 documents with contributors who have those ORCIDs. And um, so here's the title of those documents. The doc ID, in this case, is a DOI. And it looks like they all come from the source cross-reference which um, makes a lot of sense since Crossref is one of the only sites um, that we harvest at the moment that provides ORCIDs pretty reliably for contributors um, in their documents. So we were interested in those ORCIDs and we got back a list of um, documents. So the Share API has lots of different ways that you can query it. This is really just the surface. This is some very basic examples of things that I could think of. Um, but it really has lots of potential to answer a lot of questions about the data that is being gathered by SHARE and the data that's publicly available from all of our um, different providers at the moment. And as we continue to do data curation and enhancement, we'll only make these analyses more interesting and uh, hopefully more useful as they go on. So uh, this is my final slide, and thank you um, so much for um, being here and listening. And this is my email address if you had questions. Um, here's a URL for share technical documentation and more information. And um, these slides, and as, well, as well as some example notebooks, can be found here. Thank you. In the chat window.
Okay, I, um, while people are thinking of their questions, um, Aaron, I have one, which is what if some of our participants watching today are um, not yet providers to share and wish to be? Sure. What should so, they do? Yes, yeah, so you can go to um, OSF.io slash share slash registration. And um, I think we can probably put that um, put that somewhere in the chat window. Um, and that URL, you can fill out a pretty simple um, form that just gives us some information um, about uh, your provider. Um, mainly, we need to know um, a URL with um, where we can find metadata about the documents in your provider. Hopefully, some kind of documentation that lets us know how to um, filter those results by date, because we're going we're to go back on a daily basis and check for new results. And so being able to query by date updated is really helpful, um, as well as maybe what some of your, um, your schema for your data. And we also need to know that um, you're okay with us freely, freely redistributing uh, the data, and that's, and that's okay with your terms of service. And, um, and yeah, that would be, uh, that'd be the way to do it. And that will get added to our uh, queue of providers to continue adding to share. And we also have, um, if you are interested in um, not having us harvest you, but you come to us, we also have a push API. And uh, so you can pre-format the data according to the share schema and then send it along to share. And uh, more information um, is in that share technical documentation. I believe there's a link to that in the, in the chat window. Great, thank you very much. Um, I also want to, this is Judy, um, just point out, um, Aaron mentioned at the end um, of the presentation that um, during this phase of SHARE, um, we will be addressing some of the issues that she raised in her queries um, with uh, missing values and the opportunity for data curation. Um, on the SHARE website, uh, www.share-research.org, um, there is an opportunity to become a SHARE Curation Associate. Um, you'll find that information um, under News and under Our Team um, about an opportunity to gain some of these skills more in depth um, and to uh, work directly with the data in your own repository um, coming into SHARE and in the SHARE aggregate itself. So um, if that opportunity is of interest, I um, urge you to explore it. Okay, well not seeing questions. Um, I want to uh, thank everyone who participated today. Um, and a, a big thank you to, oh, I see a question. About to thank Erin, hold on. Um, I do have a question coming in. Um, the question is about the associate program. It says that library directors should send applications to share. I presently do not have a library dean. <laughs> Would a supervisor be okay? Um, yes, that is, um, that's a great question. Thank you for raising it. Um, we are really just looking for somebody who can, yes, a supervisor, department chair, somebody who can answer questions on behalf of the institution with respect to, um, to your application. So yes, thank you for asking that question. Other questions? Okay, well Erin, um, I want to thank you so much for um, preparing these tutorials and for providing training today. Erin um, did give her email address at the end, erin um, at cos.io, and you can also reach um, share at in, um, info at share-research.org with additional questions. So thanks to everyone um, for ringing on today, and I hope that everyone has a chance to go into the URLs provided and explore these um, notebooks and tutorials.